Hello! Today I'd like to do a video on um, last year's actually Adam Calendar project. Now I do appreciate that it's a bit late now because it's um, January 2017 and um, this was used for Advent of 2016 but um, I thought better late than never. So uh, I guess that most of you are familiar with the concept of an Advent Calendar to count down to Christmas effectively. And this is an electronic version that I had up in the office in the weeks before Christmas. Um, it's quite simple, you have 24 IC sockets here and a big meter. And the way it works that every day you plug in a IC into the corresponding socket for that day. So, um, for instance, right now we have all the ICs up to day 9 in it. So if we put the IC for day 10 in it, like so. There. struggling with the camera there we go you can see that now the socket for the 10th day is lit up and the meter has moved on um, by one division further towards Christmas and this obviously repeats further on so the next day would be day 11 which is here and again the socket behind the IC lights up and the meter moved on by another day. From a circuit perspective this is extremely simple. I've got the circuit details up on my website but really all it is is that when you plug in I see it um, just drives the LEDs that are behind the socket and puts a little bit of current through the meter. So on the back there really isn't anything apart from the dropper resistors for the LED and another resistor that determines the current that it goes through the meter. Now, uh, the meter itself is one of these. I have a whole stack of these old, um, whoops, like this, um, Gossen meters. And you can see what I've done is I just um, made a custom scale for this. I actually scanned in the original, so I still have the um, Gossen logo and the um, uh, rating information on here as well. And I just printed it out on some reasonably heavy duty, um, you know, self adhesive. Um, paper so that's a bit of a more heavy glossy variant and I then opened the meter and stuck this on the back of the original scale so I can um, revert the meter to its original state if I want to do that. Now the sockets are quite interesting because that was a bit of a pain. Um, if you look at one of the boards, unpopulated boards here, um, you can see here that I have um, footprints for 12 or 6 LEDs, two of them um, behind or under each socket. And the original idea was to use one of these sort of turn pin um, sockets. So for instance that would look like like this and there is a fair bit of spacing between the socket and, and the board and even if an IC is plugged into this um, like this you would still have a, you know, a fair amount of you can see through here a, a fair gap between the IC and the socket and the socket and the board. And I had originally hoped that by putting enough current through the LEDs you would get a bit of a glow um, around the IC of the light coming out through those little gaps. But unfortunately that didn't really work the way I expected it and it didn't look good at all. You, didn't, you barely saw the LEDs. Um, so I was a bit worried that I couldn't actually do it the way I wanted to. But then I remember that many, many years ago I saw some um, transparent IC sockets like like these and after a lot of searching I actually managed to, fi managed to find 25 of them um, which seemed to be that seller's entire stock so um, I bought them all. And yeah, these are IC sockets made of transparent plastic which is great because I can just put them on there and the LEDs will shine through. The issue with these sockets is that if you look very closely focus please, thank you. Um, they have a completely flat bottom um, compared to these these sockets which have a cavity where I planned the LEDs to go. So for these sockets I had to effectively grind out two little pockets here and here with the Dremel um, for the LEDs to go so I could then put the sockets um, on top of the LEDs on the board and that worked really well then. Um, however, one thing that then happened as I went on and put a couple of days in, like like it's now basically, 
is that because the sockets are quite close, uh, even between the columns and especially on the rows, you can see there's barely any gap between them at all, is I got a lot of light bleeding between uh, adjacent sockets. So for example here you can see you know, these three sockets are on and this one is off. And before doing anything to them, this one would almost be lit up as much as the adjacent ones because just so much light would be coming out through the sides. So what I then did is I took some aluminum tape and put it all around the sockets. So there's tape running on the top and bottom side of the sockets and also in between them. And that was quite a lot of work because I already had everything assembled so I had to get that adhesive tape in between the sockets which was a major, uh, a major pain. So ideally I would have done that beforehand or even you know, painted the sides of the sockets with say you know, white paint or tippet or something like that. Um, that would have been much easier, but I managed to get the tape in between all the slots and um, I think it looks really good now, just the way that there's a clear distinction between the um, sockets that are turned on and the ones that are um, turned off, so I quite like the way that turned out in the end. Um, apart from that, there really isn't much to it. Um, there is no voltage reference or anything on there, so um, the full scale reading of the meter is really determined by the power supply and I'm using a you know, external 5 volt plug-in power supply. Um, so depending on how well this regulates or drifts over time, um, the meter reading will go up and down slightly. Um, this power supply actually is quite good, so uh, I just have some adjustment pots here, which I really should have put on the board if I had had the foresight. But Really, it turned out to be quite stable over you know, three or four weeks, so um, there really wasn't any need to actually have a regulated supply on there, but uh, it works quite well. Now, one other feature of this add-on calendar is that I actually have some logic built in there to make sure that the ICs are placed in the right order. So these ICs are um, just inverters, so they can drive the LEDs and everything, but there also is some logic to make sure that um, anyway, the ICs are plugged in in the right order. So, for example, we are now up to day, uh, what is it, 10, 11, 11, yes, 11. So, if I plug in the IC for day 13, for example, uh, which is down here, you can see that the socket actually doesn't light up and the meter didn't move. Um, that's because I haven't plugged in number 12 yet. So, only when I now go ahead and put in number 12, which is up here, come on. You know, 12 and 13 lit up and the meter moved for the two days. Um, so that's just a little bit of, well, I guess tamper proofing or just you know, making sure you put in the, the days in the right order. And really, th th that was a massive pain uh, from a routing point of view because, you know, each of these little um, sections for every day has an input and output that determines, uh, that shows whether it has been plugged in and then forwards that to the next day. And just the routing between all the different sections was um, quite a massive pain, but um, aside from that, the whole construction, as I said, was really um, extremely simple and straightforward with not much to it, and um, as I said, the most difficult part was actually getting those um, transparent IC sockets, because um, without those I don't think I would have bothered actually finishing it, because it wouldn't have looked anywhere the way I imagined. So yeah, that's really where it hinges on. Um, aside from that, I have a couple of videos lined up already for this year and hopefully I'll have time to get around to actually do them, which is always the thing I struggle with. Um, but yeah, I really hope you liked this fairly brief video um, and I hope to see you again soon in the not too distant future. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.